Howdy folks, Nathan and Andre here, and uh, sad news, Lee Iokoka uh, passed away very recently, and we wanted to do a video about his top 10 greatest hits, and add to that a little bit of a bonus of other things that he's been responsible for. Uh, for those of you who do not know, Lee Iacocca was responsible for many interesting cars and worked for a few different major automakers, including Ford and Chrysler. And you might be surprised, actually, the cars he was involved with, and this is several different manufacturers, I mean, really famous cars. And this, I want to have this as a kind of a celebration, recognition of the work that he was involved in, because he was an executive. I mean, he was oh. at the top. And he died at 94. I mean, he had a full life. He really did have a full life. And he is actually a really interesting character. You know, he once ran for the president of the United States. No. Yeah, he actually did. He didn't do very well, obviously. But, I mean, he did run for it. And he joined Ford way back in 1946. And rumor has it he did not get along with old man Ford. But regardless of that, he rose to the ranks and became president of the company in 1970. Yeah, that was right after the war. I mean, the 46... And then, of course, in the 60s, this is in our number one car, but can we start with number 10? Uh, we can. Now remember, you know, he oversaw some of these cars. In some cases, he gave the cars the okay, or he commissioned people to build these cars. So it's a little bit of everything with these. Number 10, Chrysler K cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. For those yes. of you who do not know, the Chrysler K car came out directly after the government bailout from uh, for Chrysler. Now, bear in mind that these cars were very, very simple. In some ways, he sort of was looking at old Ford Model T as his inspiration. He wanted a car that almost anybody could afford that was simple, basic, and would help pull the company out of bankruptcy. And it did a lot more than that. So the K car, the foundations of that vehicle were actually rather utilitarian and served to underpin many different vehicles for Chrysler and it really did help them. The K car sold over two million vehicles. Many of them went to the federal and state governments throughout the nation and think about it this way. It also underpinned the Dodge Aries, the Plymouth Reliant and many others. Yeah, so and it allowed Chrysler to repay about $800 million of government loans. So it was a success. It was a sales success. Right. And it allowed them, even though it, people argue it may not be the best car, right? But it allowed them to move forward, to repay loan, loans, and actually become success, successful. And many people argue that that saved Chrysler, and I would argue that indeed did. Let's move on, though, to another Chrysler product, which, well, frankly, wasn't so great. Oof, uh, Chrysler TC by Maserati. <laughs> was not a commercial success, um, but because of the K-Car success, it allowed Chrysler the flexibility to build that vehicle. Boy, it just that car didn't make a lot of sense to me because it was so similar to a hit car that they did build. Um, but it wasn't it. <laughs> it was just a poorly built car. Well, there was some competition. It's kind of a grand touring car. I mean, it's kind of a luxurious car, I, I but look, also... Not very sporty. I mean, it's supposed to be sporty, but it's not. It looked like the Chrysler LeBaron, just a little bit better rounded off and a nicer interior. It just didn't make any sense. But at the same time, they were experimenting with working with Italians. And there's a lot more about that coming up. Yes, but speaking of LeBaron, this mm -hmm. is number eight in our list because the LeBaron convertible was actually fairly successful, Extremely right? Extremely successful. Iacocca did something very special with this car. He actually saw that at a time when convertibles were just dying off and nobody really wanted them, he saw an opportunity to build his own based on the K-Car platform and suddenly produce yeah. a hit. That car sold very well for 13 years and was considered to be one of the better products that Chrysler produced. Yeah, and he was kind of the visionary and oh, he helped, it, helped it along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. He saw an opportunity and he went for it. Let's move on to the next one. Number seven is Chrysler Conquest and Dodge Stealth. That's right. <laughs> so those are based on Mitsubishi products. Yeah. So uh, can I tell you a quick story? Please do. So um, this is early 90s now we're talking about. And I actually moved from Russia to United States in 92. Uh -huh. So this is kind of fresh on my mind because I was moving to the new country. And, and I saw this remake movie or TV series called The Bandit. Yeah. And I knew everything about The Bandit because The Bandit, Burt Reynolds, just 
Smoke in the Bandit. Right, but this was this was a remake. This was a remake using a Dodge Stealth. <laughs> But it was a great car, actually. Twin turbos. Oh. I mean, there was different versions of it. Oh, sure. Uh, twin turbos, nice and sleek and low. I still want to buy one now. I've never owned one, but I would like to have one. I did sort of. It was a wrecking yard special <laughs> that I tacked on parts on to try to make it fast, and I destroyed it. Actually, it nearly destroyed me. Whole different story there. But it was an interesting segment in this history of working with Mitsubishi to build these absolutely kick-ass 90s sports cars. And technologically advanced Extremely. sports cars. Extremely. Uh, All-wheel steering, twin turbocharged V6. I mean, it had some great stuff going on. Number six? Yep. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that Iacocca helped orchestrate was the revitalization early on of Chrysler's performance gusto, Dodge specifically. And one of the things they did, well, what he did was mm -hmm. he brought on Carroll Shelby. Now, there, there are rumors that Carroll Shelby basically said, yeah, just send me a check and I'll sign off on whatever. <laughs> and there's other yeah. rumors saying that he was really, really heavily involved in building these cars. So there's kind of two sides of the argument. Um, these were um, the first front wheel drive cars from Chrysler. And we're talking about the Dodge Omni and the Plymouth Horizon. Um, but they beat GM and Ford to the punch, building a vehicle that competed directly against the Volkswagen Rabbit. Um, the GLH, and this is where Shelby comes in. Goes like hell? Goes like hell. Um, he actually was behind a whole bunch of Dodge products that had turbocharged engines. That and were stripes and, and everything stripes, else. Right? Yes. There's a commercial out there where you have Shelby walking out there and He's not really talking, he's pointing and, and looking at cars, and these are the Shelbys from Dodge, and they're driving around the desert, and that's it, that's the commercial. <laughs> he doesn't really do much. He just points? He just really, he okay. points and kind of looks, and that, that, that was it, but that's all I need. Oh, and also one of the cars blows his hat off, which is pretty awesome, but the point is, is that he was able to bring in this whole new culture of turbocharged front-wheel drive, fast vehicles, that really sucked around corners when you but, accelerated. <laughs> yeah, but they're also supposed to be like emissions compliant and economical, right? So, Actually, so yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And then on top of that, at the time, Dodge Chrysler had the most turbocharged performance vehicles in the American fleet. So, in other words, the Ford, Chevy, they didn't have these cars. Mm -hmm. Dodge did. All right, let's move on to... To the, another monster. Yeah, another monster. One of my favorite cars, by the way, yeah, ever. Yeah. Uh, the Lamborghini Diablo. That's number five on our list. Yes, and it is. I had no idea, actually, Lea Coca was you know, involved in this car, but now I know. Yep. Uh, briefly, uh, Chrysler acquired Lamborghini, and they acquired Lamborghini for $25 million. Oof. That's it. At the time, Lamborghini well, was not doing so well. That was in 1987, That right? is correct. Yeah. And when they came in, they were still building cars that were, you know, over a decade old, and they just didn't really have product. Now, they did have a design, all right? And when Chrysler came in and gave them some extra dough, they were able to develop and produce the Diablo. The Diablo. I mean, this is a car of the early 90s once again which is my decade mm. and of course the Diablo was like I had a picture of it on my wall mm -hmm. you know all these things uh, next to the Countach you know this was the car it was to it, get oh god yeah and the VT later on with all-wheel drive Oof. actually the Diablo has a couple of interesting distinctions it was one of the most powerful cars of its time it was one of the fastest clocking in at over 202 miles per hour for its top speed it had some very interesting things going on, including Gandini design on the outside and a lot of the components, but the interior was actually designed by Chrysler engineers. And also I remember one of the first Need for Speed games had a VT Diablo in it. That's right. And I remember driving it on my little controller. Yep, they even had a kind of sort of convertible version of it, a Roadster, which was an unusual car within itself. But I digress. Now, well, speaking I, of cars that could potentially kill you or want to kill you with power and noise. Right. Number four, the Dodge Viper. Ugh. The original Dodge Viper. That's right. The Dodge Viper was being developed while 
Iococo was running the business and he did sign off on the design. It became a very successful car, iconic. one of those iconic cars that Absolutely. once again was on people's walls as a picture. I do have a, a Iacocca story that we're moving okay. through here. Okay. So, uh, I actually met him. Okay. Yeah, I was a kid. It was 1985, I believe, and at the time he had just returned from introducing a bunch of new uh, product for Chrysler based on the K car and whatnot, including minivans and other stuff that had already been out, but he was sort of reintroducing some higher level models. Anyway, I think he flew back from New Orleans and he went to LAX and I was there at the Tom Bradley Airport one year after the Bradley Airport opened. My father actually worked with Tom Bradley, long story. And all of a sudden there's Leah Iacocca. My dad kind of elbows me. Uh -huh. He's like, kid, that's Leah Iacocca. Thanks to him, one of your favorite cars was built, which we're going to get to on this list. Uh -huh. And so I just, you know, he kind of saw my dad, and I don't know why, but he like shook his hand and turned to me, and I said, hello, Mr. Iacocca. And he, I said it totally wrong. And he said, hey, just call me Lee. And <laughs> I, I shook his hand, and he smiled at me, kind of gave me a little wink, and, and walked off. That was, that was my meeting with Leah Iacocca. So you were blessed by Leah Iacocca? I, I think I was. Okay. I think I was. Now, here's a vehicle that I think really reversed and, and changed the fortunes for AMC slash Jeep. Jeep. Iacocca desperately wanted AMC because of Jeep, and he got them. So, the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Yes, that's number three on our list, which is still made, and it's still selling like hotcakes. I mean, while other cars and some of the crossovers, big crossovers are declining, the Grand Cherokee still uh, climbs. Yes, it does. And it's due for actually a major upgrade soon, if yeah. not an entirely new vehicle. For 2021, uh, they're working on redesigning it. And, right. Uh, uh, but like you said, Chrysler merged with AMC in 87, mm -hmm. um, and, and AMC owned Jeep at the time, and, and then this SUV was born, which is one of the original SUVs, sport utility vehicles, that went off-road and was usable. Yeah, that's right. It was really one of the instrumental vehicles in bringing about what we're driving today. If you think about crossovers yeah. and SUVs, it really was one of the early ones in terms of modern-day construction. Unibody design, uh, it was affordability, affordability. Yes. could be driven like a car, daily. Um, it was fairly comfortable. Oh, yeah, yeah. actually. All, the, all that stuff. Yeah, it really was an impressive vehicle. Let's move on, though, to one of his biggest hits and one of the most lasting ones, and that is the Dodge Caravan and the Plymouth Voyager. The original minivan. I mean, what else can we say? For, for uh, the United States. Yeah. For, for, for the United States. This was a family vehicle when nothing really kind of existed such as that before. Other than like the Volkswagen van again or, or bus or whatever you want to call it. Kind of, but this was a little bigger, a little bit more friendly. Oh, right? this was far more. Well, this is a daily driver. And the one thing that made this thing so unique was the fact that it was front wheel drive and it was based on the K-Car platform. So it was basically a car that was, you know, capable of moving stuff around like a Lots small van. Lots of people, yes. Uh, three rows of seats. They couldn't build enough of them at first. Uh, yes. Seriously, they literally, they had to add shifts. They had to do everything they could to make this vehicle for the masses. Yeah, and uh, that's a good story to have, right? If you can't build enough of something, that you know you've hit a success, a home run. And um, I was visiting my aunt in Alaska. Uh -huh. This was in the mid-90s. And um, her neighbor had a... Um, town and Country, mm -hmm. one of the first generations uh, Town and Country, and I drove it for a week, and I was still like a young guy, but I was like, I was excited because that was my freedom. I could have my own van, and I could drive through Alaska and have a lot of fun. It was a really damn good idea, and here's the cool part about that. Yeah. Ford passed on the idea. They actually were presented with that very similar idea of having a car-based small van, and they said, no, thank you. Chrysler builds it, and then and all of a sudden they Ford did. goes, oh my God, we got to build one, and they build the Aerostar. Aerostar. Uh, I also have rented one. Yeah, no, not a great band. Which is, uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, number one. <laughs> Without a we, doubt. We have to say it. Yeah, the We're, Ford Mustang. The Ford Mustang, the original. Oh, yeah. The 64 and a half. Uh, I mean, to this day, some of my wife's family still own several 64, 65, 67. Iacocca was instrumental in making this car happen. This was something that really did have a broad appeal, especially as the vehicle matured and suddenly bigger engines and more opportunity mm -hmm. for people to have everything from a straight six to a big bad V8. That vehicle was 
the flashpoint of the proper muscle car craze. Even though earlier vehicles, of course, existed, that one really did bring it to the masses, and that indeed is Lee Iacocca's legacy. legacy. Really, yeah. I mean, they sold hundreds of thousands of these cars per year. If you consider the scale of this production now, oh, I mean, this was in the '60s, and they were producing about what up to a million cars a year. They That's, absolutely uh, killed it with that one too. And keep in mind that this kind of leads up to some of um, his other、ooh. issues. One of the biggest controversies about Lea Iacocca, and that is the Ford Pinto. It was a dangerous car, and it really did hurt Ford. When Ford had to deal with this, they fired Lea Iacocca. He will unfortunately forever be associated with the Ford Pinto because he did sign off on that car. He was a visionary, though. He was way ahead of the game, and I think that kind of is the bottom line of Lea Iacocca. Yeah. Always ahead of the game, and perhaps in some ways it didn't work out so well for Pinto. But otherwise, I think that he was a hell of an innovator, and the fact that you can put his name behind some of these amazing cars really does encapsulate a pretty extraordinary guy. Let us know in the comments below. First of all, the comments about these cars we just yes, talked、please. about, and also if you have a Lea Iacocca story,、uh, let us know. Absolutely. Hey guys, thanks for joining us, and if you're a member of the Iacocca family. We're sorry for your loss. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.